Good morning. Welcome to another weekly prayer. Um, today is Sunday, February 4th of the year 2024. So um, the topic that I wanted to touch on today was when should we pray? When should we pray? We, I, I see many people who pray and they only turn to the Lord when things are going really bad. When they're going through some serious trials, some serious health issues, some serious needs. Um, and that's beautiful that you turn to him and you pray, you know, when those things come and when you're in need. But I pray that that's not the only time that you're praying to the Lord. You should be praying to the Lord all the time. As Paul says, you should learn how to give him thanks and praise in times of want and in times of plenty. Okay? So, um, you know, we don't always turn to the Lord when we need something. We should turn to him more to praise him and thank him for what we do have. Even through our trials, as Paul said. Even through our pains, our heartaches, we should praise the Lord. So I'm going to read a couple of verses really quick. And um, and then I'll let the Spirit lead me to whatever I want to say. So, when should we pray? In Matthew 135, we read, Now in the morning, having risen long while, a long while before daylight, he, being Jesus, went out and departed to a solitary place. And there he prayed. In Mark 6, 46, we read, And after he had taken leave of them, he, being Jesus, went up on to, went on to the mountain to pray. And in Luke 5, 16, we read, But he would, he would withdraw to a desolate place and pray. In Luke 6, 12, we read, And in these days he went out to the mountain to pray, and all night he continued in prayer to God. Matthew 14, 23, and after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. The Bible records Jesus praying 25 different times. And I'm pretty sure if they recorded every single time, you probably have hundreds of times. The Lord was always constantly in prayer with the Father. But what, what's the two most, the two times where we see Jesus, where we read about Jesus being in prayer the most? One is in the morning, early in the morning, even before the sun comes up. Okay, even before he is stepping out into the day. That's the time we need to pray the most. We need to pray the most to the Lord to guide us, to protect us, to give us understanding and discernment, to use us. All these things we need to ask before we step out. I, I use the analogy that's like a soldier goes out into the battlefield. He prepares himself before he goes out into the battlefield. And for us believers, there's no greater battlefield than the world itself. Okay? You don't pray to God to help you and protect you from the world if you already went and spent your whole day in the world. You need to pray before then. And the second time we see Jesus praying the most is at evening. At evening time and I'm pretty sure that those times that he prayed and spent time desolate times alone with the father those are times when he felt more oneness with the father okay he felt more in tune with the father and we should be the same we should turn to the Lord at night and thank him for the day that he got us through and thank him thank him for the protection for his blessings, even if we've, we've encountered some trials and some struggles, some persecution, we said thank him because it could have been worse than what it really was. So there, there are many times we should pray. I said we should pray all day long. The Lord should always be on your mind. And when something comes to your mind, you should pray and, and just speak with him, just commune with him. But most important is early in the morning before you step out into the world. I mean, again, you don't prepare yourself after you're already out there, you prepare yourself before you head. And then at night, thank him for the day that he's gotten you through. Okay, so that's what I want to share about this. And um, the prayer that I'm going to do today, it's just going to be a general prayer. Um, I have my list, but shamefully I forgot it. I left it at home. And it's not that long. It's only about maybe six or seven petitions that have been lifting up to me. But 
even if I don't mention them by name or by situation or circumstance, the Lord knows them. He knows them. So even with that, we can lift it up as a general prayer and he hears our prayers. Um, I wanted to touch something really quick um, before we get into prayer. There's a lot of division in this world, but I feel that there's just as much, if not more division in the church, in the body of Christ. And over things that really, really don't make that much of a difference. And why do I say this? Um, there's this YouTube channel. Again, I don't name anybody. I don't name no channels. I don't, I don't want to, because I'm no better than anybody out there. But there's this YouTube channel and <clears throat> the guy, he observes the Sabbath on a Saturday. And I read a lot of the comments on there because there are a lot of people who, yes, and they, they go on to really bash people who go to church on Sunday, who observe their Sabbath on a Sunday, who, you know, go to church and praise the Lord and serve the Lord and do it on a Sunday. And I'm like, that's really wrong because in essence, a Sabbath is a day, it's a rest. It's not just the day. But it's a rest because we know on the Sabbath, the Lord rested from all he had done. He rested from the work. And so I comment, I've commented a couple of times on this guy's channel, um, on his videos, when they talk about the Sabbath and people are just bashing believers who, you know, can't observe the Sabbath on a Saturday. So my question to them was, okay, so you're telling me that I'm not a true believer in Jesus Christ if I can't if I don't observe the Sabbath on a Saturday because I have to work okay that's not my situation but I know people who are in that situation because I have to work or I have certain things that I have to take care of that I can't get out of okay and I say to them so if I was in need of a job and I pray Lord I need a job Lord help me and provide for me the Lord and you happen to get a job. Your prayer is answered. And you happen to get a job. A job that you believe the Lord has answered. Your prayer has given unto you. But it requires that you have to work on Saturday. But you're off on Sunday or Monday. Or whatever other day during the week you're off. And on that day you observe the Sabbath. Your rest in the Lord. I mean it should be resting in the Lord every day. But your rest in the Lord. And observing your Sabbath on whatever other day. I said to them so. You're telling me that that person is not a Christian, even though the Lord answered his prayer? So does he quit his job that the Lord has given him to support his family, to support his church, to support ministries that he, that he or she might support? So you're telling me that that person is supposed to abandon that job to observe the Sabbath on a Saturday because that's what the word of God commands us. So I, I think these people, no, and today, today, I've, I've asked that question like three or four times. Not a single person has been able to answer me. Am I supposed to quit my job? Not a single person has answered yet. Why? Because they know that by saying yes, that by saying yes, that they are going against what God has answered for you, what God has delivered to you. Okay. So my thing is this, these are stupid things that they argue about. And these are Christians who feel that to be a Christian, a better Christian, they have to be like the Jews. They fail to understand that in Scripture we read about two different people, the Jews and the Gentile. And that's why Jesus sent two apostles, Peter to the Jews and Paul to the Gentile. Paul didn't go and tell the Gentile, be like the Jews. As a matter of fact, Paul bashed Peter. He called Peter out. He rebuked him when Peter was telling the people that they had to be like the Jews, that they had to observe the law as the forefathers did. So the, the, these people are like really confused and, and, and you know, I'm not questioning whether they are Christians or not. I'm, I know they are, but it's just they, they misunderstand scripture and how scripture applies to the Jew and how scripture applies to the Gentiles. So anyway, I, I just wanted to share that out there with you in case some you feel that somebody's telling you that, Oh, if you're a Christian, you need to observe. And the Bible tells us that's the Old Testament, and that's for the Jews. It's not for the Gentile. Jesus came, that was part of the law. Jesus came to fulfill the law. Okay? And so when people start doing that, it, it reminds me of when Jesus was bashing 
the the um the Pharisees for holding the people accountable for certain things that they had to do, and yet they themselves didn't do it. And it's it's just you know I can go on forever here, but that's that's not the point of my video. But that was just yeah you know, touching me today on my heart. I just felt it this morning, and I was thinking about it. It's like that's not right because you're like guilting believers because they can't observe a Sabbath on the, on a Saturday. You know I'm not guilted. I don't care. I mean. I observe my Sabbath every day. I spend time in the Lord every day in prayer, in reading scripture. So my Sabbath is every day. Is there a day that I don't do work, that I don't go to work? Yeah, there are a couple of days that I don't go to work and I spend just as much time in the Lord then. So anyway, so I'm sorry if I went off on a rant here, but um, let's go into prayer. I want to pray today for everything that's going on Um in this nation, the United States of America, in your nation, whatever nation you're is you're in, um, I don't know where you're in and what your situation is, but the Lord knows. Um, I want to pray for the Lord to to come and um, restore, restore His creation to what His original intent was. As part of my prayer every day, I pray, Lord, come and restore everything to the Father's original intent, where we can be in communion, walking with the Lord as Adam did, that we can just be face to face with him, spending time with him. And I pray that the Lord will come and restore this, this world. The world itself, the physical world, it's a beautiful world. The creation that God has made, you know, as we look at this planet, there's so much beauty in it. As we look at the stars, there's so much beauty in it. But when you look at man, today especially, how things are today, you see so much ugliness in it. You see so much evil. Yes, you still see some beautiful people and some beautiful acts and things that happen. Uh, but it seems that nowadays it's getting worse. It's it's getting darker and bleaker. And, um, you know, I'm going to share something real quickly with you guys. I had no, re no intent on doing this, but the Holy Spirit just brought it back to remembrance. The other day last week, I want to say it was probably maybe Monday or Tuesday, when I was in prayer and I was just praying, Lord, the world is getting so dark. It's so much darkness and so much evil permeating this world. And it seems to get, to get worse and worse. He gave me this vision. I don't know. Have you ever seen a painting of, it's like a forest. And it's a, a road in the forest. And the, there's a canopy of trees. And all you see is darkness. But at the end, you see the end of the, the trail. And it's light. It's opening. But it's far away. And you see a little light. And you see nothing but darkness. The Holy Spirit showed me that. But he said, this is not what you see. This is not what believers are supposed to see. And I felt him pulling me through this trail. And as I was pulling closer and closer, that darkness became less and the light became greater and bigger. And he said to me, this is what it should look like to you. Don't worry about the darkness in the world. Focus more on the light and the light is Jesus Christ. So I want to pray today that we will spend more time in the light than in the darkness, that we will focus more on the light who is Jesus Christ than the darkness who is Satan and the, he's the ruler of this world. And I want to pray for your family, for your friends, for those of you who are in need for a job, for healing, for whatever it is, emotional healing, financial healing, physical healing, whatever it is, I pray that the Lord will touch each and every single one of you. I pray for your family, for your loved ones, your unsaved loved ones, that they will come to know the Lord just as you know the Lord. So I just want to, you know, lift all these things up in prayer. And if you bow your head, close your eyes, and let's quickly say a quick prayer. Father God, we thank you for just being with us, Father. We thank you for being the light of the world to us, Father. We thank you for, for your precious Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Lord. And, and we just know that as we look around and we watch the news, Lord, and we watch the things that are happening um, around my nation, the United States of America, and, and other nations, Lord, as I hear from my subscribers and they describe to me the things that are happening in their nation, Lord, we we just uh, we know that everything is in your hands, Father, and, and the world's getting darker, Lord, but for us, it should be getting brighter, Lord, because we know that as the world gets darker, Lord, it only means that your return is imminent and more and more closer than ever before, Lord Jesus. So may you teach us, Lord, to, to focus more on you and less on the things of this world, Lord, just as 
as you pray to the Father in, in John chapter 17, that, you know, we are in the world, Lord, but we are not of this world. And you pray for the Father not to take us out of the world, but to keep us here so that we may be light, Lord, so that we may be ambassadors of you, Lord Jesus, so that we may share your glorious light through the gospel, Lord, to those who don't know you, Lord. And so I just uh, pray, Lord, just equip my brothers and sisters out there, Lord, Give them strength, give them wisdom, give them boldness to step out and share the gospel with those who need to hear it, Lord. I lift up all our family members and friends and, and people we know, Lord, who don't know you, Lord. I lift them all up to you and I pray that, you know, their hearts will be convicted by the Holy Spirit for their need for you, Lord Jesus. And that they would turn to you, Lord. And that they would ask us and come to us and, and ask us for help, Lord. And that we would may turn, turn them to the only one that can help them, and that is you, Lord Jesus. And I pray for those who are in need, Lord, whether it be a job, whether it be a financial healing, a physical touch, Lord, a restoring a relationship, Lord. I pray for all these needs, Lord, and I just pray, Lord, that um, we will be busy until you come home, um, until you come to take us home to be with you, with you, Lord Jesus. May we be obedient to your calling, Lord Jesus, and that is to go out and make disciples of all the world, Lord. And we, we mustn't forget, Lord, that the world begins right where we are with those around us, Lord. Let us be disciples. Let us share the word with those who are around us, Lord, and, and the seed will spread forth, Lord, and that you will give a bountiful harvest, Lord, when you return, Lord. And I pray that we all will hear those precious words come from your mouth. Well done, my good and faithful servant, Lord. And we, we just work for you, Lord Jesus, and not for man, Lord. May we focus on you and you alone today and the rest of this week and every day after that, Lord Jesus. And I ask this in your holy name. Amen. God bless you, my friends. I'll see you during the week.